Hey, I'm James. If you are in the market for a mixing console, perhaps to record your podcast, your live stream, or broadcast your radio show, then today we're going to be looking at two excellent options, the Rodecaster Pro and the PodTrack P8. So let's first of all look at the basics. Here on the Rodecaster Pro, we've got four mic channels, uh, so we can have up to four microphones connected. On the Zoom PodTrack P8, we have six microphone channels, so obviously you can have up to six mics connected. Um, they both have very, very similar form factors. You know, obviously everything's easily controllable via faders. Um, they both have touchscreen LCDs. Both have multiple headphone outs, so you can have four pairs of headphones connected to your Rodecaster. Six pairs connected to your PodTrack P8. Both have uh, monitor outs as well, so perhaps if you're using them in a separate room to what's being recorded, you can actually monitor what's going on through a pair of speakers, which is quite useful. And of course, then finally, we've got these, these hotkeys, which basically will be great if you're firing off background music or jingles or sound effects or whatever it might be. Eight buttons here and nine buttons on here. Not a big difference. Um, the Rodecaster and the PodTrack obviously have a little bit of a size difference. This just feels smaller and lighter, like I'd be more comfortable slinging this in a backpack and carrying it around with me, whereas this kind of just is weighs a little bit more. I think in terms of build quality, you know, they're kind of the same. They're kind of not quite industrial level, but better than some sort of cheaper level consumers uh, consoles. Things you need to watch from these is the faders. You know, especially if you're throwing them in a bag or whatever, these are, these are kind of plastic, you can easily knock these off or damage them. So quite often it's a good idea to either wrap them with something soft like a jumper or uh, even just try and put them in their own little case within your bag. You know, perhaps just use a laptop case or something like that. But fundamentally, these are very, very similar devices. Um, there are a few preferences why I would choose this one over this one. I think firstly, the user interface on this LCD screen is just much easier to understand and follow. Um, I think, although this is just as good in terms of touchscreen responsiveness, Rode have really thought about the layout, for example, when you're connecting your microphones. Uh, if you're a novice, perhaps you don't have a huge amount of understanding about audio engineering or processing, the options on here are kind of just written in plain English. So for example, you can choose what type of microphone you've got connected. You can choose even right down to the model. So if you've got a Rode pod mic connected, there's an option for that. Or if you have a generic dynamic microphone, which will behave very similar to this, there's an option for that. Likewise, if you're connecting a condenser microphone, which we're gonna be doing in a bit, I'll give you some examples of both of these recording off different types of mic. Again, you can choose condenser microphone. Whereas on the pod track, you've really got to select the volume level correctly and fine tune it depending on the microphone you're actually using. When I say the volume level, I'm not just talking about the fader, I'm talking about the actual preamp within, within the unit. One benefit over the Zoom uh, preamps, I think, is they are a little bit cleaner. So if you're driving a microphone such as the Shure SM7B, which is really popular for podcasting, this one has got up to 70 dB of gain which is more than enough to power a gain-hungry mic like the Shure SM7B. And I think the quality of the preamps in the Zoom does have a little bit of a better quality advantage, perhaps over the Rodecaster. Um, however, if you're, for example, doing a live stream, you want to actually connect these up to your computer and use them as a mixing desk to record or stream a live broadcast, the Rode hands down wins just because it's got more integration with your computer, you can fine tune and control elements of this using the Rode software. To my knowledge, there isn't a bit of Zoom software yet. Another disadvantage of the quality of these devices is the Zoom only records in 16-bit, which needs to be sorted out in my opinion, because we're recording at 24-bit over here on the Rodecaster Pro. The Rode has got slightly more options in terms of processing. Yes, we have got a few bits on here, such as uh, noise reduction and compression. The Rodecaster just gives you, again, more granular control over the types of processing that you're applying to your microphones, which can allow you to sweeten up your audio and also save time in post-production as well. Another thing I really like about Rode, uh, and again, I think maybe it's slightly unfair to compare it to Zoom because this device has only been around for a couple of months, whereas this has been around for probably about two years. Rode are really good about releasing regular firmware updates. So that basically means obviously this has kind of got a computer chip running within it. So the software that runs within this device is regularly updated and Rode listen to their customers. So for example, the most recent update, which has just come out literally a few days ago, it's currently in beta, allows you to actually use this as a MIDI controller. 
which means that you can tie this to what it's sort of a DAW, for example, like Logic or Pro Tools, and you can actually use these faders to control individual channels within your DAW, which is great perhaps if you've got a podcast studio style setup uh, such as we have, um, and you want to have a producer at the end fading in and out of different tracks. Again, it just gives you a little bit more flexibility. Both have got multi-channel recording directly to SD cards. Both run on low voltage power. The Zoom actually has batteries within it as well if you want to take it out on the move, which I think is great. Although I must admit, if I was recording a podcast with six channels, I'd be really, really wary of running this from batteries. Um, I think Rode do provide an adapter so you can plug this into a USB power source. Presumably that means you can run it from a USB power bank. I don't actually know, I've not tested this, but I'm guessing it would probably work just fine. Uh, or again, you could run it from um, another USB power source such as a computer or a laptop, which is great. Um, but again, you know, you can actually put batteries in this, take it away on the move. Another thing about Rode, we've got this nice channel here. If you press that button, it will start to flash. We've got Bluetooth connectivity built right into this. This can be used for multiple things. It could be used to pull in a source such as your laptop. You might have Skype running on that. It could be used to connect to a phone. You obviously can use WhatsApp or you know, Facebook Messenger or whatever service you wish to make a call or just you know, plain old fashioned telephone line, I guess. But again, you can connect your phone or your laptop directly to USB. Um, however, you could do that with a Zoom, but it requires a little extra plug-in, which you kind of have to plug into this port here. I really don't understand why Zoom have taken a device to the market two years later than this and not bundled in certain functionality. I think the lack of Bluetooth built into here is an obvious mishap. I think the fact that the software on here is not as nice as the software on here is an obvious uh, setback. I, I really can't understand why Zoom haven't tried to outdo the Rodecaster versus just releasing something that's kind of very similar, but perhaps doesn't provide as much functionality and as much rich detail as the Rodecaster. I think Zoom have got some catching up to do, and I certainly think if I was gonna bring a new device to market two years after another device, I'd try and outdo them. I'd try and make it 10 times better than this device, not just kind of on par slash, in some areas, slightly worse. Zoom have got a great history though with these such, such devices. Uh, they have handheld devices. We've used these for a number of years. They are known to be really reliable. They are known to have really good quality. Rode, this was sort of like their foray into this kind of device. Traditionally, Rode have always made microphones and they make very good microphones. But as I mentioned, um, I'm kind of surprised that Zoom haven't sort of bundled in a little bit extra functionality uh, to make it more comparable. But ultimately, I think it, you know, it falls down to personal preference. The price difference is pretty minimal. This is slightly cheaper than the Rodecaster. Um, however, the Rodecaster, perhaps is a little bit more heavy, not as portable as this. So if you're out on the move a lot, you might want to go on with this one. Uh, if you really need good quality preamps to drive SM7Bs, for example, you might want to go with this. Uh, or, you know, if you were just used to using Zoom stuff and you kind of like Zoom stuff, then perhaps you want to go with this option. But let me know in the comments below and tell me what you think. Are you thinking about purchasing one of these devices? Have you tested one out? Are you thinking maybe one or the other? Let me know in the comments, I'm intrigued to know. Now let's crack on and do some microphone tests. Okay, so now I'm recording into both of these devices using two Rode pod mics. Uh, these are not the best, but well, not the worst kind of microphones. They're about $100 each. They're both dynamic mics, which kind of means that they're not super sensitive. Uh, they are a little bit gain hungry in terms of they require more of a boost than a condenser microphone would. Tell me what you think of the quality. We are recording directly both devices onto an SD card um, and this is what it sounds like. So tell me what you think in the comments. Which one do you think sounds better? Do you think the Rodecaster sounds better or do you think Zoom PodTrack P8 sounds better? Again, I've kind of left these in the default mode, so I've not tweaked the compression or anything too much. So now I'm recording using the Shure SM7B, which is probably the most popular podcasting microphone. Also used a lot of live streaming, broadcast applications directly to the Zoom PodTrack P8. This is what it sounds like. Default, again, I've tweaked the gain just so it's appropriate for this mic, because as I mentioned before, very, very gain hungry. Let's switch over to the uh, Rode and see how it sounds. Okay, so now we're connected up to the Rodecast Pro. Again, same microphone, short SM7B. This is how it sounds. Uh, as I mentioned before, we've got this whacked up pretty high on uh, the preamp because this microphone is pretty gain hungry. So now we have a really special microphone. This is the Neumann U87. 
costs a lot of money. It's around $3,000 and we normally use it to record high-end voiceovers in our studio behind me. Um, and generally speaking, this is considered widely to be like one of the best microphones in the world. It's been used to record all sorts of famous albums and artists and it's been around for a really long time. So in terms of microphones, this is probably as good as you can gonna, gonna get. We've currently got it connected to the Rodecaster Pro Again, we're not in an ideal situation here. I'm kind of like in an echoey office, so probably doesn't do this a tremendous amount of justice. But this microphone sounds really crystal clear. Um, and the only thing that will really dampen how it sounds is by putting it into a poor quality interface. So really, if you have a good microphone and it goes into a lesser quality recording device, it will actually affect how the microphone sounds. But I want you to tell me, how do you think the Neumann U87 sounds when it's recorded through the Rodecaster Pro? Okay, and our final test for today is Neumann U87 routed through the Zoom Pod Track P8. Here's how it sounds. Um, one of the things you need to know about using condenser mics in this, we have these little switches here. That's actually to enable and disable phantom power. It's not entirely obvious exactly what it does, but it does mention it in the getting started guide. So make sure you read that before you plug this thing in. But anyway, tell me what you think in the comments of our final test. Okay, so we've just tested three microphones uh, across two different devices, recording different quality microphones across uh, both the Zoom PodTrack P8 and the Rodecaster Pro. I'm intrigued to know what you think about the sound quality. Do you have a particular favorite or preference of either devices or a specific combo of mic and device? Someone always has an opinion on these. So uh, if you do, please let me know in the comments. Uh, I'm sure you are leaning more towards one or the other. Hope you've enjoyed this little comparison video. I'm always making videos like this one. So remember to press that like button, hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications for more updates and videos just like this one. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye for now. Hey, before you go anywhere, I have a quick question for you. Do you have a podcast? And if you do, do you want to book more interesting, high profile guests on your show? Well, if you answered yes to either of these questions, I'd love to invite you to come and join our community over at matchmaker.fm. Matchmaker is a service that connects awesome podcasts just like yours with incredible and high profile guests that make for really interesting conversations. It's really straightforward to get started and completely free to sign up. Just connect using your LinkedIn, Facebook, or Google account, and then you can begin connecting with guests based on their area of expertise, location, and much more. If you haven't checked it out already, go to matchmaker.fm, get started. It's just like Tinder, but for podcasters.